it was discussed when we get to our team. Fantastic. Yes. Um, it will lay the groundwork for the mid-definite administration because we simply cannot go on. No. Where, where we really need a process. Um, not where we have all these offices. Yeah. I, I would like, on behalf of the administration, to apologise. Yeah. And Councillor Rebson, what um, Councillor Palmer and I sort of discussed is me and you discussing what we can do to be sure that yes. going forward, we're not only core it, but we've got a full and rich um uh, uh panel of members okay so colleagues we're going to go ahead so we're going we'll probably have a short meeting because um councillor brabazon is familiar with all the items on, and councillor palmer um uh you know yeah he's ready to okay so that's it we're going ahead councillor brabazon over to you thank you thank you very much i just want to say before we start the meeting that i think it might be um appropriate i think it was a prior clustering answer or under any other business that I report, um, I haven't misled yet, but I did attend a government half an hour webinar about the Ukrainian refugee situation. Yes, much and I think maybe yeah. under AOB we might want to talk about that Definitely. because there were two items that came up in the meeting one was school places and the other was safeguarding. Yeah. So it might be, I'm going to write notes for the members, but I, I think we're quite good to have a few officers here. We use some time to just reflect on what might be happening next week. Yeah. Um, so, welcome to the committee. As I said, I'm going to say it now. I want to thank Tammy personally for being such a strong ally on this committee and turning up at all the meetings <laughs> and really showing such great interest in this issue. So, um, Tammy is, is uh, leaving the council. And I uh, think you, are you leaving her yet? I am. She's leaving Harry again. <laughs> we'll have to have you as a co-op team from wherever you're going. Um, and uh, you've been a great, you know, great, big, really Absolutely. committed to children's services for, for four years. Uh, I think we deserve to give you a big thank you. Um, so I don't think I have to go through all the plan of the um, the intro, the filming, and all that. You can just say that the 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 meeting's been. Yes, I've got to script it. Yeah, okay. Meetings, the meeting is being recorded, and then the public are going to watch it. That that we know that. Um, I have had the. Have you had any problems, guys? Yes, um, Councillor Weston, Councillor Shannon, Councillor James, and Councillor. Right. Have we got any urgent business? Yeah. 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 None raised. Okay. Any declarations? Have any done it? No. Minutes that were sent out. I think they're they're still being finalised um, and will be circulated at the next meeting. Fine. Then we can tick that off. So let's go to item six, which is performance. I have had a presentation on this, but we'll 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 go through it and have questions. Um, is Richard here? He is. Richard. I am. Hi. So we should just acknowledge that the meeting is proceeding in form, Lisa. Sorry? Uh, just, just to acknowledge that the meeting is proceeding in form. Okay. Um, yeah, um, the old clerk's advised, well, I should say for the public record, the meeting is in form because we are in court. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Okay, good evening, everybody. Uh, first of all, it's not been very long since the last meeting in our cycle of things, it's sort of a bit awkward. So there's not much of an update to give you really over the numbers we had last time. So I'll just very quickly skim through the highlights. And that is that we've got a very similar number of looked after children overall, it's 389, which is still a rate of 66, which is exactly what we would normally expect. Last time there was a comment about the uh, children open to youth offending service. So we've got a paragraph in here, so that currently of the 389, 17 of them are in youth offending service and five of these children are only looked after because they've been remanded to our care. So otherwise they wouldn't be. Uh, number of unaccompanied asylum seekers is still low. It says 24 here, but that was a couple of weeks ago when, I, when this was written. It's now up to 26, but it's still well below the 42, which is our threshold limit. I have to apologise for a typo in paragraph 2.6. It's six. It's 59 percent of new uh, looked after children and male, not 69. So it's just below 
uh, sorry, it's 59 percent of the total population. So the new starters are slightly above, which we would normally expect because we've got a high proportion of older children, children. who are new starters. So it sort of fits in with the overall <laughs> profile. Uh, we're moving on to paragraph 2.9 in the report with the plans. I know Councillor Weston's not here, but she'll notice that 70%, 77% of PEPs is less than 90%. <laughs> but that is the half term, that is the half term rate. So we've still got another five weeks of this term to go. So we're okay. confident that will move up significantly from then. I'm afraid the other two columns are just a bit disappointing. The, the, the pathway plans and the care plans. It's been a, a, a trying few weeks. Uh, Moving down to page five, paragraph 2.15. This is a visual representation of where our children are, which shows that yes, 81% of them are outside Haringey, but most of them are in our neighbouring boroughs and authorities, like though the biggest next chunk is Enfield, followed by Waltham Forest, and then there's Redbridge, Islington and Hackney are right up there as well. And the very small ones in the bottom right hand corner are there's, well, there's one or two children in very specialist places quite far away often but for very good reasons so that, that that's where they, they they need to be and at the bottom of that page just for emma there's a chart there showing that 100 <laughs> percent of uh, 17 uh so yeah are, are in touch it actually it's all but one but it rounds up to 100 percent, so it's too good opportunity not to say that's very, very exceptionally good performance. And the, I say the, the activities haven't really changed a lot since last time. So that, that's that really just for information. Any questions? Well, it's up to us, Tammy. We have to hold the phone here. Um, have you got any questions you want to ask? And to be very honest, I think because it's quite a short space of time between the last one and, you know, I think everything is completely as you'd expect it to be, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. There's, 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 no, there's nothing of I, I, I'm not reading anything of concern in here, including the pathway plans and all the plans. They do bob up and down. Mm -hmm. and a, close, a close eye on all of it. In generally our performance is really good so i'm sure that all, all 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 managers and all workers are working to improve these plans um where are we now we're in march so sometimes it's a lag with christmas um emma Bev, not is there anything you'd like to add about getting the numbers for the pathway plans um in particular up <laughs> Emma, should I go? You go. Yeah, I was just going to say we're tracking very, very closely. We, we we know where we need to improve and strengthen, so we're working very hard, and that should rise. Yeah. Yeah. And it could be because it's a short time too, but we need to. So we'll see improvement at the next report. Yeah. I just have a couple of questions, Richard. Or I'm not sure who would answer it, but this question on Power Two Point Five. It says 85 young people starts to be looked after. I was curious, curious about this sort of age ranges because in Power 2.7, 82 children cease to be looked after. So it's pretty much an even thing. But I'm yeah. interested in ages and at the um, top of page ages three. Ages of, of the children coming in and the children going out, as it yeah. were. Yeah, uh, they, they, they do sort of match. At the top of page three, there's a breakdown there of the ages coming in. Uh, just above paragraph 2.7. Right. Yeah. Left hand chart there. You can see there's one little grey dob at age 23 was a child who was briefly looked after till his age assessment happened, but he's still showing up in the stats. <laughs> so, well, forgive me, I've been a bit dim here. Mm -hmm. the, these, the new starters, we've got. Was it 10 who were babies? Is that right? Eight or nine of them were babies? Uh, more than that, because that's just the, the, the there's nine well, male, nine male and four two, four girls. So it's 13 in all. And they, and they normally aren't looked after for that long. That's normally quite a quick turnover of those. So there'll be a similar number of very young 
levers. Yeah. Richard, should I come in and explain yeah. what, what, what we sometimes refer to as the bathtub? Yes. Um, yeah. So, council, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know the bathtub? Yeah, 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 yeah. I understand that. But when they're coming in so young, are they coming yeah. in to stay in care? Are we? Are we in court proceedings? Are we? It's. It. It would be. I can't tell you which one's staying. Uh, but it's kind of that. Of the, it's probably about a third, or at least a quarter, who are permanently looked after. Section thirty-one. We're their parents. They're mm -hmm. not going home. Unless mm -hmm. the care order is rescinded, right. there's um, uh, another portion that come in because there's a, a concern today. Uh, mm -hmm. Blue lights flashing, and then there'll be almost the same number as here who go out. And but it's not the same children no. and young people. Yeah, and then um, the the third lot are those that are in for a bit longer. Is this right, Bev? I haven't looked at the bathtub for a long time. The other cohort, I know, I'm so far from practice and I don't want to believe it, um, <laughs> whereby the court orders are going yeah, yeah. and all of that. Is, is that. is that it, Bev? So, yeah, I think what the data is starting to, to show us is that we've got two age ranges that we ought to keep our eye on. So we've got some, we've had uh, recently, we've seen some of the COVID baby boom, if you like, um, uh, and sadly, some of those uh, babies are, are going into proceedings. And if we are not able to source them with um, extended family members, they are going to be our corporate parenting responsibility longer term. So that's that's one level. And the second level is that we are seeing children arrive into care far later in their adolescence who then convert to being um, looked after permanently with us on full care orders eventually. Some of them are coming in so late that they are section 20 and moving rapidly over after 13 weeks into the YAS. Um, and we don't and the opportunity to do that reunification work isn't intact. So I think those are the two areas that we're seeing our bathtub and the watermark in our bathtub um, fill up with <coughs> the other children that we're seeing moving on through the system where you're Councillor Brabazon, you're picking up the the 82 83 are uh, the 82 that are naturally coming out of our system as they um reach anniversaries of their 18th and 25th birthday i suppose what i'm trying to get at is that because of the the movement of children as say the kids have come to an older but the ones coming in we've got the very young ones and also some I read between the lines here some quite serious cases of, of adolescence and yeah. so on. Um, so, well, the, the, the cohort of children changes all the time. And then, so therefore, what you need in foster care is for change and the skills yeah. of the social workers. All these things have to be um, aligned, yeah. Aligned and thought about mm. um, so that we, we mm. do the best. So, the children, yeah. the, the, the ones who are coming in now, we have COVID. Babies, there. Are they? Are these children who are likely to stay in care? Is it pretty much you can see the trajectory? Yeah. So we work. We work on some percentages just because it just helps us with our placement budgets, if you like, if we plan. So we're working on a particular a, a ratio that we think we won't find family members for, and that's going to be. Um, some of the, 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 the repeat, sadly, we still have some mums moving around the um, Hertfordshire Enfield area who are having children, uh, 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 children removed repeatedly. Um, because we've got this association with our how we've got availability of housing in Haringey, private housing in Haringey, that's an attraction for other boroughs to um ask mm. us to support their children so that's why we're seeing a cluster of that age in this borough there's work that we can come back to you post-election and tell you that we're what we're doing about that um but yes if we can't find care for them permanency um with outside in their family networks or do the remedial work with their parents. Those are children long term that will be with us. That work that Annika and Leona uh, and others are leading around looking at the skills 
characteristics, I think the young people call it, of our um, foster carers and social workers is really to represent some of that need, that, yeah. the, that our corporate parenting responsibility is not likely to be for five or six years, it's likely to be through, through some of those young, uh, a long, long term, particularly um, children who come into care in their middle childhood. That number isn't the one that we're worried about, it's the babies and the late adolescents. Yeah. So one more question, um, from the, because we have such a big private sector housing, um, uh, uh, was a mix of the same it's wrong word, it's a large amount of private sector rented housing here. So Cam the Camdens and the Enfields and, and the other boroughs do put this families here. At which point, if their families in these, are they our responsibility as opposed to Placing the barrel's responsibility. When does the when does it shift? Because clearly that is a huge issue for us if things go wrong. Yeah, it's a hugely complex area, Council Members, because if they if they're placed because they're looked after by those authority, they remain their responsibility. That and that's tend that tends not to be the case for looked after children. Um, they, if they're placed on a child in need or a child protection plan and then needs emerge, the changes in the Pan London procedures start move them to be our responsibility. So previously we could argue for under the six month rule that they stayed the responsibility of the place in borough for at least six months, particularly if they were funding the accommodation. That has that changed. Um, and whilst we can enter into negotiations, we um, if an incident occurs, they are our responsibility to do the investigation. So we need a, a step before that to be working across the NCL partners to get some protocols and ways of understanding in play. This might be an issue we might want to talk about because I haven't even met my counterparts from Young Barrett's really. We've never had a meeting together, but actually people move their responsibilities about because I don't, I'm not being pressed, but you know, boroughs mm -hmm. off, they move people about for reasons. Yeah. Um, and you know, if we are going to have these huge responsibilities, we ought to be talking as politicians as well as the officers. So maybe we'll come back to that after yeah. the elections um, yeah. and think about how we can communicate with the other boroughs. Definitely. And, you know, I should say that um, Bev and and men and and her team all the way down um, have absolutely improved uh, our practice with other boroughs. And whereas some years ago it might have, it was easier to get over our get into our services, it's less so now. I'm sure to, to the extent that recently Bev was telling me they're complaining. Excellent. <laughs> it. I, I, it is. I can. But you can see all the ramifications. Yes. So that that's those those are my those are my main questions about the numbers, the patterning really, yeah. and what we're seeing as a result of post pandemic, the whole landscape yeah. changing. Um, in regard to people assessing about suitable accommodation, it shows because they moved to independent accommodation. I can't find the paragraph, but it's here somewhere. Oh, paragraph 2.19. Yeah. When we say suitable accommodation, are we, sh we are we sure, are we confident? I mean, that is a bit of a value-laden <laughs> laden phrase. We yeah. Know what we mean, yeah know. This question came up last time and I did circulate, I think I saw it circulated, the list, the actual, the definition. Definitions. And there is a bit of leeway in it in professional judgment but certainly some categories are black and white where they definitely are or definitely aren't right okay i'll leave it there yeah um i don't have questions tell you want to have another go i don't i, I think you've asked everything actually nothing wrong with me well thank you richard yeah and um we're in the political into the political shutdown on monday so you all get to have a rest for a bit. Is it Monday? Yes, it's Monday. Yeah, Monday is the uh, pre-election period. So you don't have to go to any committee meeting, any, uh, you don't have to work through those meetings, really. I'm sure your work won't stop, but the political bits 
calm down a little bit. Um, so shall we move to item seven, which is private fostering? And I think that is Bev. Thank you, Richard. I think you Yeah, bye. Hi, Richard. I'm going to offer that you could stay or go, but I think he's gone. He's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, thank you, Anne and Councillor Robertson. I just, um, I thought you might like to meet the team. I thought members might like to meet the team that work that work with me on this on our, our quest to um, it, roll out our private fostering um, campaign. So I don't know if uh, Beverly and, and and Sandy, you just want to introduce yourselves. Yeah. So um, yeah, I did introduce myself before, but as Bev just said, we've been working and leading on the um, private fostering campaign. Uh, actually, Bev. Beverly's probably been involved in it a bit longer than what I have. Um, and um, so I'm Sandy Bansall and I'm the service manager for the fostering service. And the private fostering obviously sits underneath the fostering service. And I'm Beverly McKenzie. I'm the senior <laughs> practitioner within the fostering service. And I'm um, my task with the private fostering is to actually um, supervise those people that are coming as private foster carers and provide advice and support to them um, for the duration of the private fostering arrangements. I also um, assist in the um, publicity of private fostering by um, doing presentations at various activities like designated teachers going into schools and um, bringing about awareness and meeting with people and sharing ideas about how best to actually promote um, private fostering and bring about awareness in the community and other other people. Thanks, Beverly. Thanks, Andy. And and Councillor Brabazon, I particularly wanted them to be here because the paper is really here for um, information and for noting. But we have a little bit of a hidden agenda uh, that we because oh, of po post post <laughs> In the new order, we we would like um, this to come back for a fuller discussion, um, for uh, so we can set out a bit of a strategy for um, a agreement. But the statement is something that we're required to publish, and it should be published annually. And so that statement we would like to have published when we launch um, the annual report for the Haringey safeguarding children's partnership next week so it's for noting in advance of that publication this what the strategy that sits underneath it around further raising awareness we feel that we would like member support to help us with that messaging in the community um so we we have done some work behind the scenes around developing a private fostering app that will be ready to be launched next week um, and we think that's going to be kind of the, the most technical way of, of ensuring that all our community groups, because it has the functionality to be translated into relevant languages and for people to report that their concerns, questions into the MASH um, um, if they feel they may be looking after Johnny da from mum down the road and they're not sure if it's private fostering or not. It's a it's a simple tool that tells them whether it meets the criteria. They can fill out a, a PDF, send it into the MASH, and the consultant will ring them back or Beverly will be in touch with them to take people through. Um, we've had a stubborn problem um, for a little while with private fostering. Um, the, we, uh, and our numbers are, have always consistently been low, and that might be that's just the way it is. But um, the measures that we've put in place, we want to make sure that we've done all we can to ensure that the low numbers is absolutely representative of the community that we're serving. Um, and so that, along with other methods and with member support and um, a, a, a reinvigorated awareness around the professional group, is what we want to come back and share in more detail. Sandy and Beverly, have I captured that? Yeah, most yeah. definitely. Yeah, I think you've captured yeah. everything within that. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, I just want to echo really around um, about the, the private fostering app. And as Bev's mentioned, you know, it's got all of the details in there around the referral process, what needs to be done. And I think one of the good things and one one thing that I was really pleased with about the way the app is set up, it's it really it's um, it, it, um, it's it's specific to, you know, whether you're a professional, whether you're a parent, whether you're a carer or a child. So it, it gives advice to follow for each of them categories. 
um, and what you need to do in terms of, you know, making a referral in. <clears throat> in terms of the referrals that come in, they would they will come to MASH. Um, and then there there is a private fostering assessment that's undertaken by the assessment team. Um, and obviously, if it meets the requirements um, as a, and it's considered as a fo private fostering placement, it will come over to um, Beverly for her oversight and who will, you know, be, be part of that assessment in visiting the placement um, and um, seeing where the child is living is safe and suitable for them. Um, and then obviously, while the while the private fostering arrangement exists, there'll be regular visits to the, the child in, in the placement as well. Um, but really, it's about just getting everybody on board and making sure that we're um, raising the profile of private fostering, making sure people are aware of what a private fostering arrangement is. Um, as Bev mentioned, you know, our, our figures have been quite low. We've only got currently we've got three private fostering referrals in the service um, that are live referrals. Um, you know, our, our view is that there may be more um, out there that people were just not aware of what a private fostering arrangement is. Um, but hopefully one through the sharing of the um, the statement of purpose, which clearly sets out, you know, scenarios in there which could be a private fostering arrangement. And obviously with the with the um, the, the awareness of the app and the use of the app, um, people will actually have a lot more clarification on what private fostering is. And also now that the pandemic's over, well, at least it's it's getting there, we can do more face to face contact, like going into schools at meetings and talking to people and meeting people um, in the community more in churches um, in order to um, bring about that same awareness that we're trying to do. I think this is a really a bit of an important area. And I'm really pleased you brought it to the committee, actually, and I have to thank you. Um, first of all, in our own barrel, we know that private fostering can cause, can lead to some terrible outcomes, mm -hmm. because I, I think Victoria Gammon is effectively privately yeah. fostered. But, so we know we have to be vigilant and all the rest of it. So I'm really pleased you have got your eye on this. I know the government timed up, I remember it from a few years ago, but strikes me we're a bit of a, an issue here because if children are coming from the Ukraine, I, this is the link I think, I don't, this, this occurred to me when I was thinking about refugees coming and they may be children living with, come with their parents or, or on their own, you know, teenagers or whatever, and they end up in the borough and the, the people open their homes to them because this is the government's scheme. Mm -hmm. Where does that sit in terms of these of our safeguarding arrangements, and would it count as private fostering? This was a question I did want to ask. Actually, that was on my AO, my AOB. Um, there seem to me to be some very big implications for how how we're going to do the job of mm -hmm. safeguarding children who may come as unaccompanied or even accompanied, but in other families, in other settings. Um, notwithstanding the government is saying everyone has to have DBS checks and people are going to be paid by the government. But it seems to me a slightly, is it yeah. a bit of a grey area? And my understanding is the government is going to be having some seminars or something next week. That's what they said yesterday at this workshop, mm -hmm. which was for the lead with Hera, I covered for Hera. And they gave us a half an hour. And yeah, as I said, Safeguarding was on everybody's mind because of, of child sexual exploitation, because of trafficking, Absolutely. mob slavery. Absolutely. It didn't say those words, but no. that's the implication. And so the fact that we were meeting tonight, I did want to bring it up actually. Yeah. It was an absolutely big issue. Yeah. I really show you like you know what, what 90,000 people who have registered. So yeah. we'd like to think the very best of. But I'm afraid that's not the reality, is it? Yeah, I didn't tell you that sort of interesting. You know, and it's it's so, you know, I'm afraid there are and there has been no mention of safe. You know, there's been no mention of actually the the process steps that would need to be in what, place. What the government said yesterday, just to bring the officers into it, and the officers, I'm not just telling you, no. was that um, 
they, they knew this was a touch point, they called it, a touch point for local authorities. And they can't do it without local authorities. Yeah. But there's, they're going to issue some guidance next week. But there was absolutely no detail about how they understood our safeguarding role. Yeah. And I think we cannot be naive here. Eastern Europe, travel across Europe. Yeah. We, we've, got, we've got to start from the basis that there could be some awful things that could happen. Yeah. And yeah. they think people are going to start arriving next week as they make the visas easier. And the arrivals through, um, they're giving a PDF. You can print off, you can get on a plane yeah. and arrive. Mm -hmm. If you have a known connection, so I think yeah. the, I think children's services. My my feeling is children's services are going to be completely in the eye of this and yeah. team. So so at this point, if, if I start because basically we're getting certainly you know the, the government will produce its guidance. Mm. Um, the focus has been on visas and access. The focus has hasn't been on um, protecting those who are coming over. Mm -hmm. Neither has the focus been on protecting those who are in Poland and all the other Eastern European countries. Um, I think on day one, I wasn't too bothered because I think the local people who were in Poland came forward. On day two, I was slightly more worried about strangers putting placards saying, come to me. By, de by the end of that week, I was totally, you know, um, uh, extremely worried that paedophiles from across Europe and the world will be arriving somehow into Europe and just taking families. Um, I, all of us have seen lots on the screen and the, the one, the, 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 the picture that I can't get that, that stays with me is of a little boy who was simply on his own sobbing and people were walking past him. He just stopped walking and sobbed. Um, so, Anyone could take his hand and take him anywhere. I think he was probably under six, and so therefore he he will lose a memory of his family, of where he comes from, and so on and so forth. So, as happens when there's a war um, in other countries, and we know that NGOs, as good willing as they are, that young people are exploited. I think that there's the potential for exploitation here. In terms of the role of the local authority, at the moment we have none. That most people are coming over in families and they're making decisions because they're being paired up to go over here and there. What I've heard is that, local, that the government is going to give the local authority money to do some sort of checks. Ten thousand pounds per yeah. family or person. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. What those checks are, what I've heard on the radio, is anything from you know, being sure there's a DPS in place to checking that there are fire alarms. This isn't the job of the local authority. So there's lots of work that we probably need to do. Well, not the local authority, it is of the local authority, but not children's services. We don't do, we're not trained, as far as I know. I know we've got our fostering colleagues in the room, and our fostering colleagues do do checks in families. They do, but it's, a, it, it's not. It's not a cursory check. It's a check that's built up over time. Yeah. Um, it, it's more than just whether you've got a smoke alarm. It's much more extensive than that. Um, and they'll ask you to remodel your home if you need to, if you want to foster. But that's a different contractual mm. relationship. Mm. And, and that takes time and it can't be done for thousands of people. It's the training and support. You know, you're dealing with really traumatised human beings coming in. Yeah. Coming into a country where they may not speak, speak the language, where the children may have to go to school, where they might be facing stigma, all sorts of things. So it's that, you know, you, you don't just dump a foster child onto somebody overnight. They go through intensive training and support. Yeah. And yeah. we're not going to be able as, to do yeah. any of that. Yeah. As, as, as times I was looking at this and thinking, we've got a bit of a framework. I don't know what's going to happen, what the government yeah. is going to say. I, 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 I do share yeah. your exactly. worry, and if someone lands here, and then it's child sex exploitation, yeah. or it's yeah. worse, yeah. we have to be prepared because we don't know no, who's no. coming forward. Yeah. The, the government did say they were going to do checks on the um, police national computers, sex offenders register, and all that stuff. Oh, I don't. I can't see the government's resources enough to do it. 
I'll say, Councillor Ramson, what I, what, I, what I meant to do today and didn't get round to is asking Andy if he's going to call a gold meeting. And if Andy's not going to call a gold, a gold meeting, then Bev, uh, Jackie, I think that we should call a gold meeting and invite in the people we need, like, such as Charlotte, who does food through community health. We can ask uh, Bev Tarker, who's on sick leave at the moment, to join us. But we need something on Monday or Tuesday at the latest so that we are coordinating this. We did brilliant work, or rather, the council did brilliant work, in my view, through COVID. Um, but we've not had a gold meeting yet to, or a meeting to discuss this. Should we pick this up on Monday and then we can invite in the right people that we need to pull this together? That would be great. I mean, yeah. this, this just, just made me think. So I'm really pleased that we're going to adopt the statement. All right, we're not going, but we're very happy to. Um, accept the statement and for you to go ahead with the campaign bed and all the things you need to do. It's a bit of a small area, but it, it, it gives us a bit of a, it struck me, it just gives us a bit of a framework and a pathway and it could be really important right now. Uh, maybe I'm, maybe I'll put two problems together and debate, you know, not quite making a solution or making five out of two and two, but I mean, Councillor Brabazon, and, uh, and if it helps at all, that the, the the way that the government is um, packaging the message to um, uh, some of the practice leads is that they are really trying to support families. If a child um, under the age of um, 17 uh, arrives without anyone exercising PR, then they the usual processes they want uh, local authorities to consider the usual processes around unaccompanied asylum seekers now um that we know that there are those, those are pressures so there's some internal conversations we need to have around uh, a, a review of our capacity um particular to uh, any uh, what this might look like for U ukrainian fa um to be residents in the same way that we looked at afghanistan so uh, we, we that internally that's something that Emma, myself and others will manage. It's the families and how they are dispersed once the home office um, system says this Council Brabazon wants you to live with her in Muswell Hill. That's the bit that we're not connected to as yet. So I'm sorry if I was bringing in a sort of dimension that wasn't right. Can I germain to this this report, but it just struck such a chord because of the private fostering issue and people mm -hmm. buying fostering really and being paid privately and the council having the sort of interventionist or, or supervisory role. And I suspect we well, we just don't know what's down the line now. No, we don't know. But, but, so, Tammy, have you got any questions about this? I haven't. No, I think it's great. I think it's it's really important. Um, and I know, yeah, we're not for it, but yeah, we absolutely agree and support. <laughs> so we're, we're perfectly happy to accept the, the statement, endorse the statement, and for you to carry on so that we can get the campaign going. Thank you. But we do need people to tell us if they know about private costume. They do. <laughs> tell us. They do. Um, there's probably a lot more of it going on than we know. So... Thanks, for, thanks very much. I'm not sure we can do any more on this. So, I'm sorry, Chair, can I just ask, when do you expect to pu publish or when will you schedule to publish anymore? So we're looking to publish the private, the statement will be published through the Haringey Safeguarding Children's Partnership next week at the annual launch on the 20th, on the 27th, by the 27th of, of March, this will be published. And that's the latest, yeah? That is going to be the latest, sir. Which brings us to the verbal um, presentation, which um, is something which is really important. And this is about how we're going to move forward. And Anne, is Beth is leading on this presentation? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it is. So um, I, I'm happy to... Councillor Brabazon, we, we've met and we've spoken about this and and um, so you know that we've pulled the work together, but I think I'd like Emma to, to kind of have her voice in the room um, and just present it. Emma, will, anything, just we'll just give me a nod and we'll jump in, but um, yeah, just present as, as we've discussed. 
Thank you. Let me know when you can see yeah, my screen. It's showing, Emma. It's good to go. Right. Thank you. So thank you very much for this opportunity. Just as a reminder, I'm Head of Service for Young Adults and Youth Justice. And I really wanted to come and talk to you all about the Corporate Parenting Champions proposed pilot model. Um, just to give you a bit of background and context, you'll be aware that in November last year, we had a visit from Mark Riddle um, from the DfE, who's the lead expert for care leavers. And as part of his visit, he had the opportunity um, to meet with senior officers, um, operational staff, and also talk to some of our care leavers. Um, in his feedback meeting, he was really impressed by the leadership and the management approach um, that he considered to be very ambitious, aspirational, passionate, committed, and really pitching above good. Um, and as a result of this visit, um, he really set out some uh, recommendations for us, one of which was this champions model um, for our corporate parenting committee. And he acknowledged that we have really strong buy in for our, from our elected members, but really wanted us to consider um, how we could give um, elected members a, a champion role around themed areas. And he really placed a lot of emphasis on um, going out to key agencies and partnerships uh, in, in ensuring that they are really putting forward um, their best offer for, for, for our children and young people from their department. Um, and, and really giving the, uh, the board, the uh, committee, sorry, the opportunity to sign off those offers. So um, we've spent a bit of time thinking about those lead key areas and we're, we're very conscious that transitions and, and transitional safeguarding is a real area that needs some further um, looking at and a refresh. And we know that the emotional health and well-being of our children and young people is always central and a key area of concern. Um, the employment, uh, education and training we feel could be strengthened even though we're doing very well and the same for the accommodation and life skills. Um, so the idea of the model and, and the pilot is to um, develop uh, 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 elected members as champions, as advo advocacy experts um, within these particular subject areas. Alongside them will be subject expert advisors um, and it will give everyone the opportunity to have greater consultation with our children and young people and really hear about their experiences. The pilot proposes that there'll be a training programme consisting of, of developmental sessions and for those champions. And it will cover things such as improving the understanding of the role and the function of the Corporate Parenting Advisory Committee, exploring local information and circumstances of children in care and care leavers, um, exploring the vision, the aspirations, the pledges that are in place, really supporting members and officers and partners in Harringay to gain the knowledge that they need to be effective in their role as corporate parents, and support individual committee members and the committee to gain the knowledge and confidence to carry out their roles as champions for children in care and care leavers and really consider the ways to champion the role of the corporate parent and how to inspire effective action and influence across the care system really effectively to improve outcomes for our children and young people. The learning um, programme, uh, there will also be um, a, a full programme of, of three sessions and we're hoping that uh, our young people who will be key experts also um, within this model will be able to um, help train and roll out the learning programme. Session one will really be thinking about corporate parenting and improving understanding. Second uh, Session two, the leadership role of the Corporate Parenting Advisory Committee. And session three is a much wider session for the whole council really thinking about their corporate parenting role and how to fulfill that effectively. Um, sorry, um, in 
in terms of uh, the development and the focus of the champions in their roles, um, each champion involved would be having the opportunity to meet with their named contact at least three times a in a year to develop an informed awareness of the theme. And this will include a service tour, uh, develop an understanding of the services that are within the theme remit and how they operate and support children in care and care leavers, devising an action plan to impact outcomes. Keep the Corporate Parenting Advisory Committee informed about the, the lead area uh, for which they're responsible and progress against the action plan and monitor the implementation of the corporate parenting strategy in their specialist area. Um, the work of the champion uh, in the pilot will consist of visits and meetings um, to see firsthand how services for children in care and care leavers work in practice and where improvements may need to be made. Uh, meeting with the link officer, so this would be the expert officer, um, that allows the champion to ask questions, witness uh, whether the things people say are happening are actually happening. This is called tri triangulation assurance. Um, have contact with children, young people and the service. Find out more about the service in question. See how the service works to support uh, our children in care and understand progress against any service improvement plans. Really talk with frontline practitioners and operational staff, pa um, carers and children and demonstrate to staff that CPAC takes its role seriously. Um, but it also need to ensure that councillors maintain the separation of functions. Um, so it can't um, can't be discussing necessarily the day to day running of the operational service. So each um, expert and champion would be linked with the AD for the area and a linked person, so a linked expert. So, for example, in terms of education, uh, champion would be um, the virtual school head alongside the AD. Um, and we've got some suggestions of some of the questions that might be asked as part of um, the work that's going to be undertaken on, on these slides. I'm not going to go through them all because they're extensive. Um, you can peruse um, at your convenience. So health and wellbeing champion would be working very much with the designated safeguarding nurse and the designated lead looked after nurse. Um, then we've got a senior officer for leaving care to support as an expert, what's working effectively and needs to improve in terms of accommodation and life skills. Again, working with um, our housing colleagues, so Denise Gandhi and Jill Taylor and a lead from the service. And in terms of transition and safeguarding, um, leads would be Bev and uh, Jenny Plummer. That's very much because that's a, a significantly um, complex area of our work currently and managing that transition for our young adults um, can be very, very tricky. Um, mainly because a lot of them don't have the diagnoses um, as they transition into adulthood. So our next steps would be um, to finalise a protocol to underpin this model, to really try and begin to co-produce the pro a, a young person friendly version of the protocol, invite expressions of interest from CPAC champions, invite expressions of interest from our care leavers to become our, our expert advisors, devise an assessment criteria for the selection and uh, interview, um, which we try and plan for July 22, and uh, launch the pilot for September 22. I don't know whether you've got questions, Bev, do you feel there's anything there you want to draw out further? Emma, you presented that beautifully, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, Excellent. Tammy, what do you want to say except that you wish you were here now? <laughs> oh no, I think it's fantastic. Um, I think it's really good. Uh, I have one, a couple of points. I've, I've seen this before. And I hope you, you've got the slide. I, yes. I, I did have a really good chat yeah. with Beth earlier. Yeah. Good, because there's nothing to do with political parties at all. Um, this is just our role. And we've been talking about this for a while because I've been so worried. I have been, irrespective of whether Mark would ever come or not, deeply worried about the fact that yeah. this can't be, you know, other than you and, my, you and me, really, it's we've had very sporadic engagements, and I'm not sure that, that as a body politic, we have been as 
in who has been as vigilant. So this is long overdue, and I'm really, really pleased. I think um, I don't. I think what we need to do is to see what the constellation is of councillors, what, what the mix is when the elections are over. Because I don't th I think we have to start, there has to be a starting point in all of this, that every single councillor of the 57 understands they have responsibility, that it isn't really negotiable. And I think that's, I, that's my feeling, that's the starting point. That you, when you sign your member codes of conduct and all the roles and all the jobs, Maybe some of them will be perhaps raised with the chief executive and to lock it in. But that part of your legal role is to be a legal parent. I, I just think we've got to get through to councillors yeah. that they have a responsibility and then to try and see who, who comes forward, yeah. who's really interested in this area. Yeah. So, yes, they have an expression of interest, but also. When we don't struggle around for the committee, we have to really think some of that's yeah. through. Because this is it's a great plan. Yeah, it is. It is a great plan. And I really, really think it would really enrich, Absolutely. enrich councillors as much as hopefully enrich children and show the staff yeah. how supportive councillors are. So there's not any criticism or any disagreement. I think it's fantastic and we just need to get on to it. Yeah. But we need to find. I, I suppose from our political side, Dean, and, and I don't know how you guys select people to go on committees, I think we need to perhaps respect to think in our own groups, really talk through how we select people to go. Okay. So I, you know, I was mm -hmm. first, you know, as soon as I was elected, I said, I want this, because I knew that's what I wanted to do. But there aren't many, perhaps like us, that have that real interest and passion, and they end up kind of getting put onto committees. Mm -hmm. And I think I agree. I think I think I think people if, if someone wants to do children's then this is the area they're going to be looking for. Don't think that's the area. And in my experience, people shy away from children's because it's a, it's a scary, a scary, it's a great book company. I love it. Mm. But it is scary and it's about risk. It's vulnerable. It's vulnerable and physically you can yeah. That's the thing, I mean, no girls in my group wanted children's, I'll be honest. Mm. You know, Liz did it before mm. me and she was great, but you know, obviously she she'd taken a leadership role that's like different, but I'll be really honest, nobody else well, put their hand up and said I want that. No. Well, that's that's um, for those reasons. We are a bit, I don't think it's uncommon, but there are we will find people and we need to do it. I don't know. Colleagues, are you still on screen? We're still here. Yeah. Could you, you take down the sound? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> we can't Sorry. see your slide. We're seeing your slide, your lovely slide. Lovely. We, we are, we are, this is, meeting has been recorded, so we will be a bit thoughtful about what we're yeah. oh, talking yeah. about. Yeah. Um, but um, I think that in the new administration, this is the end of the municipal year, and this is a fantastic report to bring at the end of the year because it looks forward, yeah. and that's what we want to do. So I think we 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 are totally we that's a royal we really <laughs> no, um, totally on board with the with the principles and to move forward. But I think we'll have to think about what have to see what happens. And I, I think yeah. the point about the political groupings is a good point, and that is something to discuss. Outside of this meeting, but it is something to discuss about people being volunteering for meet committees or place, how it works. It's also the time commitment, you know, different different committees have different time commitments. And well, the, well, this plan would demand more time. It would, yes. Yeah, so you would really genuinely need to, Absolutely. to understand the time commitment and to have that kind of set up very clearly, I think, um, and, and that we do get the right people to want it. Yeah, I, I think um because I think this is all political discussion and it is that discussion and might want to be recording. Are we able to stop recording? After the meeting is over. Should we finish 
Shall yeah, we yeah. And, then and then we can carry on because yeah. we are but, informally. Well, I suppose I'd like to say as we close the meeting, yeah, is that we agree with the proposals, yes, that we're going to take them forward. That they've been beautifully presented by you, Emma, beautifully drafted by <laughs> whoever drafted them, and they look really snazzy. And um, we're going to try and take this plan forward within the new administration, and that will be um, after May 5th, yeah. Um, Make six, get your skates on. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much, everyone. Um, and I, I just want to thank, uh, uh, at the end of this, this news for me, I want to thank all your team there for fantastic work. I, 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 you know, everybody turns up to these meetings and the enthusiasm is so great. It is powerful. Yeah. And I, I can't say it's very uplifting. Yeah. I find it really moving. And, you know, I just want to say that. Thank you all. And I hope we'll come back. Yeah. <laughs> and the corporate parenting team, of course, includes Lynn. Yes. And, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nicholas yeah, yeah. is not here tonight, you know, and all the, all the help all from the health, everybody. Yeah. yeah. Lovely. Thank you very much, colleagues. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. I, I was saying